today we're going to be taking a look at the top five Stream Deck plugins for, well, streaming. We threw in a few alternatives as well based on the different streaming platforms and tools that you might use. So buckle up and I'll see you guys right after this. Before we dive into today's content, let's go ahead and pause for a moment to consider the value of making smart decisions. Speaking of which, we're thrilled to once again partner with Mint Mobile, the pioneers in transforming the wireless industry. They're dedicated to providing premium wireless service without that hefty price tag we've all come to dread. Ever find yourself puzzled by the sky-high cost of your wireless bill? Well, if so, Mint Mobile is on a mission to demonstrate that there's a smarter way to do things. New customers can enjoy any three-month plan for just $15 a month. That's correct. You were hearing that correctly. 50% off their unlimited plan. Imagine accessing the nation's largest 5G network, enjoying unlimited talk and text, and all the benefits of a high-tier wireless experience at half the cost. The transition to Mint Mobile is a breeze thanks to their eSIM technology. Many of you can seamlessly switch over from the comfort of your home in as little as 15 minutes. And for those of you that prefer a physical SIM card, Mint Mobile's got you covered there with a free SIM sent directly to your doorstep. Let go of the old, overpriced, and convoluted ways of wireless. Head over to trymintmobile.com forward slash how to tech to snag this incredible offer and get premium wireless for just $15 a month. My wife and I jumped on the Mint Mobile bandwagon over a year ago, and we've been fans ever since. Who can resist the allure of significant savings? What's going on guys? Chad here from How To Media, the channel dedicated to helping you take your stream to the next level. And today we're gonna to be talking about five streaming plugins for, well, the Elgato Stream Deck. And let's go ahead and jump over the computer and get started with the first, which is actually two based off of what we kind of talked about in the beginning, based on what programs you're using to stream on which platforms, we're going to be taking a look at a plugin for OBS Studio and one for Streamlabs. So here we go. We've got OBS Studio here by Elgato and Streamlabs, well, by Streamlabs. And the reason that we're taking a look at both of these is because, well, some of you probably prefer to either stream with OBS Studio or Streamlabs. And well, that's okay. And I'm not going to exclude you based on you deciding to use one over the other. Personally, I like using both of them for very different reasons. And honestly, I've started streaming more with OBS Studio than I previously did. But at times I've just used OBS Studio to record and Streamlabs to stream. But whatever, teach their own. And let's get started with uh, the options that we have in here. So you can go ahead and download those plugins. Very easy to find on the Elgato Marketplace. And then we can see kind of the options that we have inside of here. So for OBS Studio, we have the ability to set a recording button, the record pause, which would be very useful considering I've used it already a few times since we started recording this video. We can set chapters now inside of OBS Studio, which is pretty cool that we can do that. Um, so we can set that to a button if we wanted to. And essentially, I'm not going to go down through absolutely everything, but we've got a bunch of different options, everything from replay buffer to virtual cameras, to changing of toggling of uh, the sources being on and off transitions, and even taking a screenshot, which I did not know was a feature um, inside of OBS. So actually, I just learned something new today, which is pretty cool. It doesn't always happen. Um, but yeah, there we go. I learned something new about OBS today. Pretty neat. So those are the OBS Studio ones. I'm going to go ahead and remove those. And then let's take a look at the Streamlab ones because, well, if some of you use Streamlabs, it's good to know what options you have there as well. So Streamlabs desktop, and we can see that we've got the options to adjust and move our scenes around, set our mixers audio so we can adjust options up and down. We can toggle our recordings. We can adjust the stream information and toggle sources on and off. So not as many options inside of the Streamlabs one, but you still have a decent amount of options and configurability. And, um, you know, same thing with OBS Studio. So there's our first, first plugin. It's technically two, but we're going to count it as one. Next is Govi, and I absolutely love the Govi controller. And at first, if you look at this, you might go, well, I don't have any Govi RGB LED lights or anything like that. And I would say, well, okay, they are probably, from what I can tell, the most popular brand. So if you do have them, cool. Um, they also make more than just RGB LED strips. They make, you know, lights that tower over in the corner and could re look really good in the background of a stream and um, would be really neat to see how you could also figure it out you know, how to use that in some other capacity, but also 
they have these things called Govee strips. And if you can see here, I've actually got them paired to different things. I've got a camera, an LED left, an LED right, and an office TV. Now, I can set these to one of those and I can set an action to whether it toggles it on and off based off the press of this button. It's really nice for something like my DSLR camera. And then also some of the studio lights that I actually have here. I've got one back here that's showing a blue color and I've got another one over here to the side as well that's showing more of a white color and I can toggle them on and off just like I would any other appliance. So it basically lets me have control of a smart switch directly inside of here as well as some RGB LEDs which is also super fun for the stream as well. So if you want to automate stuff to make streaming even easier just walk in and press a few buttons or press one button on the stream deck that does a multitude of things well this might be an option for you as well up next for number three we have stream counter this is not overly complex at all you can actually utilize this in a bunch of different ways with other software but i love the simplicity of this one and the way it can integrate into a stream and what essentially it allows us to do is every time we press this button it can actually go up in value, but first we need to set a file name for it to work. So I'm going to create a file here. We'll just call this test or yeah, text, whatever, test.txt will be fine. And then we can actually press the button and it will start storing a counter for each time something happens. And what's really neat is we can set up other options and configuration settings for it. So we can set on a long press that maybe it removes one. So if you ended up counting something a certain way, you can remove or add. We can give a title prefix to the different things that we have and also play sounds based on these. Um, they're really neat and cool. Um, and the reason why is because if you're wanting to go like with a kill counter or how many times you prestige playing Call of Duty this weekend or how many games you won of playing Call of Duty this weekend, whatever you want to go with, how many battle royales you won, um, we can basically set that up to a counter and we can read from this text file into OBS and actually show that number on the screen during your live stream. So this is something that could be really neat and interactive. Uh, maybe we can keep count of how many people have subscribed or followed the stream, something simple like that. And you can set up a multitude of these things. So if I wanted to set up another one to count something else, well, I can do that and pull that into my live stream however I want to, whether that's through a text file or some other method that we want. And we can even click reset here and a bunch of other values and stuff. It's just a really simple and neat plugin for the stream deck that could be really useful for your live stream. Next, we have the obvious ones that you probably knew were going to show up here at some point in time, just like the OBS and Streamlab ones. And that is the Twitch tool as well as the YouTube one, because the YouTube one I actually think is kind of new with the features that they've added in here, because I believe at one point in time this was not a thing. And I'm super glad to see that it's included now. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk about the Twitch one and the YouTube one things that you would expect out of these already. I'm actually going to delete these others out of our way because we're going to need it we're talking about Twitch and YouTube. So let's go ahead and find Twitch here and go over some of the stuff that we can set. So we can set automated chat messages if we wanted to press a button and send a message to the chat. Super easy, something that we can do. We can set one to clear chat, do an emote for chat, followers only chat. Um, we can play ads if we wanted to. This is really good, especially if you're an affiliate on Twitch. Um, you might want to set your ad ads to run at certain times so people don't get pre-roll ads whenever they come into your live stream. It's going to be a lot easier to grow your live stream if people aren't watching two minutes worth of ads whenever they first you know, try to watch you. Um, so you can set that up. We can do slow chat. We can set the stream title and stuff like that if we want to um, create clips. Th this is kind of where I think this gets really useful. Um, utilizing it for um, things like running your ads. Let's see, um, setting a stream marker to um, basically set up for putting up clips later, um, creating clips, um, opening last clips if you wanted to utilize that for showing them on your stream and stuff like that. Those are some really cool options that are in there as well as some of the other stuff, depending on how big your stream is. The bigger your stream gets, well, obviously the more useful some of these features are gonna be um, for that live stream. But there's a lot of options for Twitch and if you have a stream deck and you stream to Twitch, you should find some use case out of this in some way, shape or form. 
And if you guys aren't already, uh, multi-streaming, guys, is huge and big now. And if you're not doing that, well, you probably should be doing that too. And the cool thing about that is, well, we've got options as well. So we can send uh, chat messages as well with YouTube. Um, we can see how many viewers. I, I believe that was also an option for Twitch as well. So you can see how many people are watching the stream. Pretty neat to have that there. Um, we can play ads. We can start and stop our stream on YouTube, open up our dashboard, which is pretty cool, and even pause the ads if we want to, and we can set durations and stuff like that. And they're highly customizable, and um, you can set those up as well. So two really neat ones. If, Like I said, if you're streaming to Twitch or you're streaming to YouTube, um, either one, or if you're multi-streaming, you might want to utilize both of these because they just make it that much easier for you to just go ahead and press a button and have that, well, functionality. And number five is streamer.bot. This is a highly customizable thing that if you're not utilizing already, you might want to go ahead and take the time to look into it. If so, just wait until I make the video on it. It's something that I've already decided I'm going to make videos on and um, we'll be working on that. So yeah, we've got streamer.bot and speaker.bot, but we're going to be talking about streamer.bot because of the plugin integration and the use cases that it can add as well. But for those of you that are unfamiliar, streamer.bot is really, really neat, and it has a bunch of scripting integrations and integrations with a bunch of really big platforms. So Twitch, YouTube, um, our streaming programs like OBS Studio, um, Streamlabs Desktop, um, Coffee, um, Stream Elements, Voice Mod, um, Patreon, If This Then That, uh, VTube Studio, all this stuff, even though got a wave link, um, some of the things that you can do. And also just, even if you're not using a stream deck, if you can see the amount of plugins and integrations that they make sure works is just crazy. Um, but you can actually see that, um, big streamers like pirate software actually utilizes streamer.bot. And I believe that, um, if you watch the stream, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the counters at the bottom, I think are actually triggered off of, um, streamer.bot. So it's utilized in that way. Um, Nutty uses it for a lot of stuff and has shown it in a ton of videos. And you can even see some other YouTubers and stuff that talk about this. But the fact of the matter is, is that you can do a lot of stuff with this. And that's great that it's a program that you can do that with. But what makes it even better is now that we don't even have to open that program, we can actually go ahead and set actions directly inside of here. So we can set these base, uh, based off presses, releases, holds with these buttons. We can set an action switch. We can set indicators based on of whether or not stuff's going on. This stuff right here can be overly complicated or just as easy as you want it to be. My goal isn't necessarily to just sell you on going ahead and using this plugin. It's also something that you'll want to look into on setting up streamer.bot obviously and get it working but once it is working this is going to be a super versatile tool for you um, as far as a plugin goes for stream deck so there you have it guys that was a lot of talking on my part i apologize i hope you enjoyed those plugins they range kind of from a different varying point of view we have our basic ones like obs and streamlabs for streaming we have things like twitch and youtube for well the platforms that you might already be on govi for the interactivity and just the ease of setup for making streaming easier for you the stream counters well to make the stream more engaging by adding like counters for so many kills or deaths or challenges that you're trying to do and whether you've completed them or not and just making a simple button that you can press to update that counter and then also streamer.bot for those of you that just have this insane vision of what you want to do whenever certain things happen in your live stream and you can trigger that and set that up however you want and even have buttons that are dedicated solely for that so there are other plugins that are out there for the stream deck and they might even be more better suited for streaming based on your setup and whatever you plan on doing. So like always, I suggest you go check out our other videos on the stream deck. There are tons of really neat plugins that could be useful for people that are live streaming, but also for people that make YouTube videos or for people that never do any of that stuff. Um, utilizing the stream deck, in my opinion, just for being able to play video games and adjust the chat volume up and down and separate all that stuff out with the stream deck plus is just highly usable and 
my favorite thing about the products in general, but also the other stuff that it can do just saves time and makes things easier for automation and stuff like that if you're interested. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Chad from How To Media helping you take your live stream to the next level with the Elgato Stream Deck and some of the really neat plugins that are out there. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.